welcome back. So, let us continue the discussion on different combustion modeling approach and they are theoretical as well as the numerical point of view. So, what we have done so far we have looked at the simple models like started with AD breakup model, then AD dissipation model and then followed by the discussion on AD dissipation concept model. And then we have looked at the statistical based model like transported PDF. So, now we will move to the next set of discussion which will be specific or rather more uh, applicable to the premixed combustion and that context we will discuss about some of these premixed combustion based model. So, what we have done so far we have discussed this part which are applicable to any mode of combustion though I have already mentioned anything applicable means does not become it is going to be accurate enough, but they can be theoretically applied to any sort of model with their pros and cons. Now, these set of models are very specific to the premix combustion then we will go to the non premix combustion. So, just to quickly look at the a previously propagating premix flame this is hot way. So, your reactant comes in these are the product and this is going to be reaction zone where your chemical reaction takes place because of that there would be heat release and there will be density change and the flow accelerate. One of the very very fundamental property of the premix flame is their flame velocity or laminar flame velocity and or laminar burning speed or the second one is the uh, flame thickness. So, if you uh, just recall this laminar flame speed or laminar burning velocity proportional to the diffusivity and also the chemical time scale. So, now for this freely propagating system this will be one dimensional pre mixed flame. So, we have our continuity equation where then we write the species mass fraction equation where this is the chemical source term as we have seen it so many times chemical source term and then we write the temperature equation this is specifically for this premier propagating flame which with the assumption that remains one dimensional in variation. So, we write the temperature equation there and then to close down this all these above equation we require equation of state where pressure density are coupled and then the enthalpy which has a uh, enthalpy of formation and the other part. So, now one of the thing which is required is the diffusivity of the species. For the time being we will assume the constant Lewis number model. So, that means Lewis number is 1. Typically if you look at that for different species this is how the variation of the Lewis number. And now, once you assume the Lewis number 1, so that means your thermal diffusion and mass diffusion they will be of the same order. So, we will use the fixed law of diffusion which we write in terms of gradient and then we get the relationship between lambda and C p which is in temperature dependency there. Now, we convert the uh, temperature equation and then we can see there is a if we plot these things for uh, different term in the reaction zone there is always a balance between convection and conduction that means this is the term and this term and reaction zone this should be I mean this is sorry preheat zone and this side is the reaction zone. So, this is the balance between reaction conduction and convection and these are the different terms what you can plot and see how they actually uh, vary from one zone to another zone. So, this picture we have seen it what happens in a turbulent flame front you see lot of wrinkles like this and this is because of your eddies and these eddies can basically allow this flame surface to wrinkle like that. So, this turbulence chemistry leading to increase of flame surface 
so increase of conversion that means heat release will increase flame front disruptor so that this will not only increase the surface in the when the there is increase in the surface volumetric heat release will increase at the same time there could be some disrupt, uh, disruption of the flame front now just to quick recap of the this is how one can see the structure of premix flames i mean these are turbulent premix flame and you can see different kind of structure all this uh, wrinkled or uh, the curved wrinkled shape is primarily due to due to eddies of different scale which could be starting from the large scale to small scale so multiple scale that would form that now if you look at the, the instantaneous images this is the instantaneous flame front what you can see and if you put that flame brass this is what one can see uh, i mean this is the flame brass and in between there would be lot of this chaotic randomness so one is that definition of the flame thickness which is proportional to alpha by sl one can write in terms of diffusivity and the flame speed smith number which is one lewis number one prandtl number one these are the non dimensional number now there would be one important uh, definition which is required is the turbulent reynolds number which turbulent reynolds number is defined as u prime lambda by nu where lambda is the integral length scale of the turbulence so the turbulent damkohler number will be ratio of the flow time scale to chemical time scale so this will dictate which one is dominating whether the flow is dominating or the kinetics is dominating so depending on that so the damkohler number would play an important role and one can distinguish different flame zones through that some time scale the flow time scale would be of lambda by u prime because this is our uh, integral length scale characteristic time scale is del ds by sl so the damkohler number one can put it it's an ratio of flow time scale to chemical time scale so once you put that this is what you get in and uh, uh, this lambda if we now use the taylor micro scale and kolmogram length scale we can use that thing to define the karlovich number which is a ratio of lambda by eta so one can write in terms of taylor micro scale and the fluctuating component of these things so the reynolds number based on lambda would be u prime lambda this is reynolds number based on lambda and turbulent reynolds number based on eta would be u prime eta nu so if you look at the ratio between this re lambda re inverted lambda re uh, taylor at the taylor length scale re lambda square this would be so re eta to the power 4 so this is an important correlation one can think up that what how the scales changes now when there is a premix flame front one thing that will happen now you will get one more important thing is that we have seen instead of up laminar burn i mean top of the laminar burning velocity you get turbulent burning velocity so turbulent burning velocity so this depends on the local mean properties that is one of the important thing but there is no consensus in literature whether the burning velocity is a characteristic quantity that can be defined unambiguously for different geometries so that is another important point that means flame structure changes and the flame structure is also dependent on your turbulent scale length scale and time scale now turbulent length scale will also large scale structure depends on the geometry so the large scale structure will react to the impact or would impact to the flame front differently compared to a different length scale and the flame surface uh, deformation would be different so that way these things are not very unique then so this was proposed by damkohler so there are magnitude of the scale and then these things so we can have wrinkle frame or purely kinematically controlled frame this is a simple structure where you have a flame front this is or this is your unburned mixture and this is the burned mixture 
so the laminar flame velocity move like this and if I take this surface this is how the turbulent flame front would be acting. So, through the equating the mass flux through the in instantaneous turbulent flame surface area. So, where we can write m dot equals to rho unburnt S L A T equals to rho unburnt S T A naught. So, we are equating the mass flux whatever coming in that is going out and using that we are writing that. So, S T by S L is somewhere proportionate to the ratio area ratio. Now, using the geometric approximation Dam Kohler proposed that this should be 1 plus u prime by. So, this is an initial one and then S T by S L would be 1 plus u prime by S L. So, this is a very important correlation initial days people have used it extensively, but later on there are modifications which are proposed to this kind of correlations and one can also like I mean Skelkin showed that this is not the linear variation of u prime by S L, it is something like in this. So, that is what and relationship proposed by Krimok is something different which is like this. So, if you use different ratio of S T by S L, the impact on the frame front would be also different. So, these are the proposition that was made then later on Clavin and Williams proposed that no S T by S L would be of different order. So, it is a slightly more complicated and Goulder proposed that this would be of this order. So, there are if you look at the literature I mean not only the textbook also the scientific uh, reports and journals you can see that there are plenty of these kind of things which are proposed and every correlation has its own advantage or disadvantage or rather proposed based on some set of observations or database which was collected due to the what it essentially means that S T by S L proportional to diffusivity, turbulent diffusivity and the molecular diffusivity. So, we can using that where the turbulent diffusivity is proportional to this and molecular diffusivity. So, we can say that S T by S L would be proportional to like that. Now, if you have a small intensity turbulence conditions, there are not many formulation available. So, in this case the turbulent mixing is rapid as compared to the chemistry. So, and the distributed reaction zone Golder in 1990 proposed that this ratio would be S T by S L is 6.4 into S L by U prime 3 by 4. So, as I said these are there are multiple of this, but the situation is that this statement of tar or the correlation of turbulent burning velocity is not universal or uniform. So, you require numerical simulation flood I mean that is why using flamelet model turbulent bonding closure gear numerical simulation these are the things one has to do or look at the and typically the experimental measurement methods they look at the conical stationary flames, swelling flames and all these things where. So, now if you look at the method of analysis now one way would be the it is a flame normal analysis where you gather the information in the direction to the flame surface or you can use the one point analysis. So, the flamelet based model these are will be the flame normal kind of analysis where you have a phase gas and burn gas and the PDM models are essentially the one point analysis. So, when you do the flame normal analysis there are one important variable which is shown is that progress variable C which is typical in phase gas 1 and when it is the burned gas it is uh, 0 and burned gas it is 1. So, this progress variable says that it is monotonously increasing from reactants to product side and it is normalized between 0 and 1. So, it could be defined in terms of species mass fraction or temperature like that. Now, in flamelet model in turbulent calculations the transport equation of the progress variable is solved. So, that means along with our mass, momentum, turbulence kinetic uh, it, uh, turbulence we solve also progress variable and then use the other information from the lookup table and all this we can solve for the rest of the things. Now, we can typically for the premix flame there are different regimes one one can 
So, if you look at a simple one flame front which is a reactant this side and product this is our laminar burning velocity, this is the flame thickness. So, u prime by S L is our RMS fluctuation to speed L T by is the integral length scale to delta L. So, this is our tau k or tau L would be like that chemical time scale would be like this. So, there are some other scales one is the you can have mean flow scale where length scale is L velocity u time is this integral scale L naught. So, velocity would be and the time naught would be and Kolmogorov scale it would be this and there you have flame speed, flame thickness and all this. So, this is again important we come back to this structure where your flow scale will be like this and then your chemical time scale is delta by S L 0. So, you can you need this to be connected with this non dimensional like a turbulence energy number, dam color number or Calderby's number. So, the chemical time step and the flow time scale they are sort of. Now, some interpretation you can have a let us say a planar flame where uniform flow field is coming in like this. So, this would be our S L this is a planar flame. So, planar flame for the stability criteria is U has to be S L. Then if you have let us say wrinkle flame this is our flame front I mean the upcoming flow field which is coming at U this is wrinkled flame and this is our S L. So, which is nothing but one can actually say the equivalence is that you have some eddies like this small eddies which is interacting and then plus you have some flow. So, there is a combination of this. So, these are our eddies. So, this combination can give you this scale. So, your let us say if you have a situation like this where this is the size and this is the length of the AD L and this is my UL this is unburned and burnt side then our AD size is L eddy velocity would be U L then turnover time would be eddy turnover time T A D is L by U L. So, the mixing time would be T mixing which would be L K by U K. Then we can find out this uh, T A D by T mixing is R E L to the power half, where L K is eta and U K is U eta. That means the Kolmogorov length scale. Now you can have this kind of a schematic like small structure to this. This goes to small and this goes to. So you have a inlet then this is your energy transfer this already we have discussed in details can it at epsilon and this is in terms of heat. So, if you say this is my demarcation zone and this is my ad size L this would be my delta L that means the reaction zone. So, one can define the scale relationship among the scales like we can have epsilon which we have already seals which would be finally, V naught cube by L naught which is V eta cube by eta. So, finally, tau naught by tau eta is proportional to L naught by eta to the power two third. 
Similarly, V eta eta by nu is 1 which will give us V naught L naught V eta eta proportional to R e by L naught. Similarly, L naught by eta would be proportional to L naught by nu V naught eta by L naught one third. So, that means L naught by eta proportional to R e L naught to the power 3 by 4 V naught by V eta which is R e L naught to the power 1 by 4 and tau naught by tau eta R e L naught to the power half. So, this relationship anyway this is a recapitulation because in the turbulent discussion we have done that. So, our R e L naught is nothing but V naught L naught by nu dam column number would be tau naught by tau c which is L naught by V naught S L by delta L. Karlovich number is tau c by tau eta which is delta L by S L V eta by eta delta L delta L by S L delta L d by nu V eta eta by eta eta which is delta L by eta square and turbulent intensity that would be T i which is V naught by S L. So, using this different number or non dimensional numbers the one can define this diagram which is called the Borghi diagram. It defines the <coughs> different ray uh, this is a laminar flame then you can have wrinkle flamelets. So, this side you go L t by delta L and this side you go u prime by u L. This is a line which is Kalnovich number less than 1 corrugated flamelet region. This is distributed reaction regime and this is well star where the dam color number less than 1 and this line correspond to dam color number 1. And this particular zone you have both dam color number and Kalnovich number greater than 1. Then later on it was modified by Peters and it is a slightly I mean slight modification to that to see. So, as I said this is a laminar zone this remains a wrinkle flamelet then this region they say it is a corrugated flamelet then this line correspond to Kalnovich number 1. So, this is thin reaction zone and this is the. So, most of the flame front will lie in this zone and this is our <coughs> broken reaction zone and all this because once you have a information about your geometry and your fuel and the compositions one can estimate where this flame is going to actually belong. Now, once you come to flamelet regime your Karlovich number is getting that del L by S L V eta by eta which is going to be del L by eta square which is less than 1. So, that means, if I plot a diagram where this is my let us say flame front uh, this is the AD which is actually going to act on it this is unburnt side this is burnt side. So, the thickness of the reaction zone plus I can say this is reaction plus preheat zone the thickness of the reaction plus preheat zone is thinner than the Kolmograph scale. So, which means it is delta L less than eta. So, transport of mass and heat between the reaction zone and the preheat zone is by molecular mixing and as a good approximation the local flame propagates at laminar speed and the thickness of the flame is laminar. So, if you look at at the Kolmogorov scale by m dot reaction all layers this is u eta by delta a d by del a square which is del l by eta u eta eta by d which is del l by eta less than 1. Now, if we go to thin reaction zone their Kalnovich number is tau c by tau eta del l by eta which is a square. So, Kalnovich number lies between 1 and 100. So, here 
the same thing if we look at it, we can see one zone here and one zone here. This is our unburned, this is burned. So, the eddies are kind of took that. Here the reaction pockets may not pass the inner layer of the reaction zone. So, here one can say that m dot Kolmograph by m dot reaction all layers is u eta by del by omega, which is u eta del L by d by del L square. So, which is essentially del L by eta u eta by eta. So, del L by eta greater than 1 and the other round Kolmograph by m dot reactions all layer you can say u eta by del L by S L by del inner layer which is del inner layer by eta u eta by eta d which is del inner layer by eta 0.1 del L by eta. So, which is 0.1 calorie number to the power half which is less than 1. So, different resume you see different kind of now if you go to distributed reaction zone here Calovis number is essentially greater than 100 and the same flame front if I see then there would be unburnt, burnt and this would be a pocket where you can have a large vortices this will move. Mm. So, reactant pockets may pass the reaction zone without full consumption. So, in that case the Kolmograph by m dot reaction would be del L by eta u eta by d which is del L by eta greater than 1 or m dot Kolmograph reaction would be del inner layer by eta which is 0.1 del L by eta 0.1 calories number half greater than 1. So, this is what happens in the reaction zone. Now, if you this is TPF is the turbulent premix flame. So, this propagates due to heat transfer to preheat zone to heat up the fuel air to above crossover temperature and fuel air mass transfer to the reaction zone to provide fuel air. So, transport of mass and heat between reaction zone and the preheat zone can be different for laminar premix flame depending on the thickness of the zone. So, this is now we have seen the flame speed. So, this is our fresh gas, this is burn gas, this is an iso surface of the flame front. So, this is a time instant T, this is time instant. So, C is the progress variable and C f is the iso level of the progress variable at maximum reaction rate. So, this is the equation and absolute speed would be w dot n. So, this is how the velocity vector this S d would be acting in this direction, this is u d t and this is w d t and S d would be w minus n this is displacement speed. So, one is absolute speed, one is displacement speed and delta n is the unit normal vector which is calculated like delta c by mod of delta c. So, apart from that you can see now if I start with this equation where del c by del t w dot del c 0, now I use the unit normal vector then I write this. Then from here I can get absolute speed is w dot n which is 1 by del c del c by del t and then that will give me the displacement speed between this which is 1 by magnitude of del c del del t of u delta c. Now, you can find these things then we can find out the relationship between the displacement speed and the species equation using this information. So, we will stop here today and continue the discussion in the next lecture.